announcement was really 3.0, where, where Microsoft said, we're ready for self-service business intelligence. And to go ahead and show this over here, we're going to change a few things and add some KPIs. So what we're going to do is add KPIs first the traditional way, using what are known as expressions. So I'll explain this expression to you see how, and see if you like it, see how it works and whatever else. So what I'm going to do first is come down into sales and go down, go down inside of it. And you guys see this is sales and I'm going to click inside the subtotal row right off the bat. So I clicked inside the subtotal row to begin with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click inside of it and click on properties. Remember properties allow us to do things, change the font, change the color, do special little things just like that, right? And I'm going to click on a very special set of properties called text box properties, which means that for this text box, I'm going to come in and change some colors. Now, one of the concepts that I had not introduced yet, but which is coming up in two different lectures, one more lecture, next lecture is parameters, then it's this, and then in particular, the, um, this one for the field, is the concept of color, or, or the concept of expressions. Expressions are where we're allowed to basically come in and run some sort of formula that we can put in, not .NET or anything else like that, but some sort of formula that produces a result. In this case, I'm gonna show you guys the classic case of producing a result for you know KPIs and this is the old school way of getting a KPI inside SQL Server Report Builder like if you're running 2.0 2 or something let me click on fill first okay so this is fill and what we would do is with fill that, recur that refers to the background color of a particular cell okay now once we have fill in here what I'm going to do next is come down come down come inside and there's a fill color and it's been set you know it's a hexadecimal code that you can look up easily or you can just see it on the left I'm going to click on FX because what I want to do now is I want to set my own color. Now, using the formula that they gave in the inside of the course, I'll explain what it means. First, you always put equal whenever you're about to do an expression. That tells SQL Server, hey, I want you to put in some sort of formula that you're going to evaluate at runtime, which means at the time that the at the time someone clicks run the report. Now, I click on if like this. This is a special if which says this. If something is true, do the very first thing after the comma. If it's false, do the second thing. So if, and if the total sum of, and now we tell it, fields. Fields means columns. Sales. Sales over there means the actual, um, um, fields over there, you guys can see over there for the sales column, dot value. So we're looking over here at the actual total value inside of there, right? And if it's greater than or equal to, 5,000, comma, and give it a color, line. We could have also put a hexadecimal code in there, you name it. Otherwise, if it's false, come back and evaluate this thing again. If sum, and this time, let me make it a little easier. Remember that we had all this cool drag and drop stuff? I love drag and drop. I don't like to have to write stuff out if I don't have to. Forget that. So I see a sales over here. I'm going to drag it right in there. Shoot. Double click it anyway. There. Double click it in there. And there's fields.sales.value. Ooh, much shorter. Thank goodness. Now, less than 2,500. And we'll tell it now red. And we put these things, um, whenever we write something that's a string and not a number, we put it inside of quotations like this. Otherwise, what's going to happen is yellow. There, that's a three-prong KPI right over there. Evaluate the very first expression, right, and look for values that are greater than or equal to 5,000. If they are greater than or equal to 5,000, give it line, this little green color. Usually green psychologically means that something's went good. Go, you name it, just, just like with stoplights. Otherwise, turn around and check it, right? And if it's less than 2,500, give it red, which means bad. And if it's not less than 2,500, which means that it's between 2,500 and 4,999, give it yellow. That's it. That's a standard KPI right over there. It ranges all the way to greater than 5,000, less than 2,500, and the middle. Now we go ahead and we click OK. Got that finished. Click OK. Now let's run the report. Expand it. And look at that. Look at that in there. When we expand the report, mm, 
now we've actually got a very beginning part for our report, right? And we've actually got fields that dictate the way our report is actually running. Oh, very, very interesting. We can see that accessories did bad. Expand it out and see the accessory that was doing bad. Very handy. And you guys see how it captures the eye? See that, that red, green, yellow is the most popular sort of look you can get. Sometimes I always recommend to people be safe. People like to get creative on this kind of stuff and use funny colors and whatever else. Red, green, and yellow has worked forever. Be safe. Our goal is for our business users to be able to consume these reports and make, de make critical decisions where they need to. Not to show off with animated graphics and whatever else. You guys can watch some of my .NET tutorials for that. But for reports, though, we need to bring in straight data just like this. And this is safe. Definitely. Okay, let me just expand this a little bit. Make sure it takes up the full screen. There we go. All right, and let me click back on design now. All right, now, one of the most fundamental concepts you can give users is something like a graphical thing that usually shows the condition of the data, how it's doing. Like, for example, a gauge. A gauge is very, very nice because what it does is, is, it, is, is it has a little pointer that moves around, and on that little bitty pointer, it'll show you exactly what's going on and give you a visual feel for how things are. See, the goal is that users can take one look at your report, and in just one look, users know exactly what's going on. So what, how do you end up doing this? Okay, first, click on somewhere in the white space. Now this is anywhere in the white space. What you're doing is you're doing what's called, you're actually setting, a, you're actually resetting the design surface as this is known as. So that's the main thing is you're resetting it outside of the table. So you wanna click somewhere outside of the table. Then click on insert and there's a data region section. All right, on, on the data region section, come down and click on gauge. Just double click on it. Woo, that was easy. Now, all these shapes are over there. Some of these shapes can be a little distracting. Some of these shapes, though, are just excellent for being able to get down the main point or whatever else. Um, usually, the linear ones are going to be safer than the radial ones. Radial ones, you got to be a little more careful with because they can distract people. Not all of them, but some of them can, like these scale ones typically are, are ones that are sometimes you know used with a lot of hesitancy, so to speak. All right, now, on our linear type right over here, you guys can see these um, linear types. We've got some different types, horizontal, vertical, you guys can see all of that. And what we're going to do in this particular section, right, once we actually have our, actually have this one, is let's choose horizontal. Horizontal is one of the safest gauges you can use. People just love it. And now on horizontal, click OK. Oh, look at that. There's a horizontal gauge right over there. Now, we want to work with this gauge, so we don't want to bring it into a column yet, because if we do, um, it might become a little smaller or harder to see at the moment. So we don't want to do that just yet because we need to change some very critical things on this gauge to begin with, all right? So first thing we're going to do over here, right, is we're going to turn around and we're going to take a data, a data field. So we'll take one of these fields over here. So click on data set. And there's sales right off the bat. And what we want to do is we want to take sales essentially and we want to drag sales to the gauge, okay? So watch what happens. We're going to take sales. I'm going to hold down on the left click, drag it, and oh, look how it just instantly lights up. Gauge data, all this sorts of stuff right over here. Everyone can see that. So we instantly get this light up because this is how you auto map this chart thing, which is called a gauge, directly to the actual um, data set. They've made it so easy, you just have to drag and drop it somewhere in there. Where do you want to drag and drop it? So yeah, where do you want to drop this, right? So you take your sales, bring it over, and where do you want to drop it? You see that little option right over there? Easy enough, just take it and drop it into values, which means that, voila, you've just populated your grid now, or populated your actual um, um, scale, as you guys can see over here, with values values that are actually representative of the data set. Woo, that was easy. Um, actually, the sum of values. So you guys can see that right over there. So now we've got sum of values over here, and we've actually just finished populating our data set. We're starting to rock. We're starting to rock at this point. Okay, now, once you've actually got it populated, and once you're actually inside of that particular place, right, on the very next part, what we need to do is we need to turn around and we need to change the pointer property. See, that's the pointer right over there. So we click on this, click on the pointer, and you guys will see this. We click on the pointer, right click on it. So I first left clicked on it to select it, then I right clicked on it, 
and now left click on pointer properties oh that was easy okay now once we have the pointer properties we're going to come down inside of this and go to pointer type and inside of pointer type change it to bar so we're going to make it a bar Y. it's a little thick bar that moves along um, it makes it more noticeable at least because we can almost see like a little gradient type thing where we can see the bar get thicker and lighter which which really helps our users see differences but you could have just used pointer to it depends on what you're going after sharp look especially whenever it's big tends to work better with pointers um, whenever you stick it inside of a little bitty column the um, the gradient bar tends to be a lot better all right now once you come over there on that particular part you're gonna now see if you finish seeing bar click on pointer fill right because we want to give it a color and on pointer fill on secondary color let's click down on it let's choose yellow so we'll see yellow come over there so we're gonna see this change from white to yellow so as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger we go from white to yellow now once we're actually done with that part um, what we're going to do next once we finish changing it to yellow and whatever else is hit OK and now right click on the full scale that's the scale right over there you guys can see it like what looks like a little bitty ruler and then on the scale um, left click on scale properties there are ten ways to get there by the way this is just one way to get to the scale properties same thing with them all the other properties we talked about that a number of times inside the other sections now once we're inside the scale properties this is interesting okay how big do we want the scale to be what's the maximal value that we're gonna allow in our scale and so what it'll do is it'll actually show you know it'll actually make its highlights relative to that so I'm gonna come back and I'll choose it and I'll just put it in manually let's say 25,000 you could have just chosen the max you guys notice over here I could have clicked the down arrow and I could have said you know the sum the count the whatever else and what it would have done then was you went ahead and chose the actual maximum based upon the total sales or whatever else okay there's the sum right over there for the maximum value right so we put a constant in sometimes you will sometimes you will definitely 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 and then once we finish on that part I'm gonna click OK and once we actually have that done where we've actually got a scale we haven't we have I have not added this yet into the actual column which is what we'll do in a little bit but I'm gonna click run just for a moment bring it down and there's our scale you can see going from zero and you see how it starts out white and then it gets darker 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 very interesting over there so you can see the darkest part being 25,000 now I haven't had a pointer yet we haven't brought it next to an actual column that actually represents this part which like we will it's just a particular scale at this time so let's make it a little bit better okay now we got a part it's a, a pointer it's a bar right so we're actually starting to get started here and what we need to do now is we need to have a column so I'm gonna right click on columns and then I'm gonna go down to insert column and I'm gonna say insert column to the right excellent alright now that I've got my now that I've got my column inserted to the right I'm gonna give it a label and we've seen how to do this before you just click on the inside and I'm gonna say KPI there we go and then once I actually have my KPI over there um, what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna actually finish up my scale real quickly